Yes, I know, I'm late. Before anyone says, Mr. Duncan, you're late, you naughty man. Yes, I know, I am a few minutes late, for which I apologise. But I am here. Yes, we are all together once again. It is Sunday. It is a fun day. It is time to improve your English. Yes, this is English Addict coming to you live from the birthplace of the English language, which just happens to be England. I know I'm late before anyone says Mr. Duncan you naughty man you are late I am here now did you remember to change your clocks I almost forgot but I did manage to remember so now it is 10 minutes past two o'clock in the UK just in case you are one of those people who has to change their clock as well have you done it or did you forget? But now it is 10 minutes past two. I know some people are going to think, Mr. Duncan, you are late, but I'm not late. It is 10 past two here in the UK. <laughs> Greenwich Mean Time, GMT. Not British Summer Time, because now we have said goodbye to British summer time and we are we are saying hello to <laughs> Greenwich Mean Time. I know it's all very confusing. It confuses me, to be honest, every year. So many people complain about this. They say, why? Why do we have to keep changing the clocks every year? So first of all, I suppose I should explain what all of this is about. We have British summertime there it is can you see it there on the screen right now british summertime often referred to as bst and we have gmt which is greenwich mean time and that is what we are using now we have gone from british summertime to Greenwich mean time so in the summer the clocks go forward by one hour and in winter they go back by one hour and many people refer to this as daylight saving time now here in the UK this originally started as a way of giving people extra daylight so they could travel safely on the roads I'm not joking you can look it up so what is the Greenwich Meridian? Well, that is the line. It is the reference line which divides the days from each other. The difference between each time zone begins at the Greenwich Meridian line, which is the line you can see there going down the centre. And the difference between each time zone begins at the Greenwich Meridian line. So things that are ahead over here are plus and things that are behind are minus and that is how we get the time zones so that line signifies the difference between one day and the next so behind is earlier and ahead is later so if you are ahead of the Greenwich Meridian line you are ahead of that particular time some people are maybe an hour ahead maybe two hours ahead maybe 10 hours ahead perhaps 11 11 hours ahead of course you can also be behind as well for example people in South America and the United States you can say that they are behind so they are on that side of the line ahead tends to be countries that are in Asia and of course Australia as well. So that is why we have that particular line and the line itself happens to run through London. We have a very famous place called 
the Greenwich Observatory which of course is where the line passes directly through and there it is oh <laughs> there it is over there the Greenwich Meridian line so that is the reason why we have time zones and this particular line is the center of that Greenwich Meridian line you can actually visit London and you can go to a very special place called the Greenwich Observatory and there you will be able to stand on either side of Greenwich Mean Time so you can have one foot in the past and one foot in the future not literally of course so we are talking about time zones some people are behind and some people are ahead depending on where you are in the world so if you are watching in South America Brazil perhaps Argentina Chile you will be behind so it will be morning there and if you are watching in Asia maybe Malaysia Hong Kong Vietnam it will be ahead Whew. I don't know about you but I am really sick and tired every year of having to explain this nobody likes this you see no one likes changing their clocks because it always causes a lot of confusion however the good thing is we get an extra hour in bed so today I was able to stay in bed for an extra hour and to be honest with you I really did enjoy it we are talking about food today one of the things one of the many things we are talking about also yes we will be playing the sentence game as well a lot of people love playing along with the sentence game so I hope you will enjoy that too yes we have once again made it all the way to the end of another weekend and of course by that the end of another week it's Sunday there are supposed to be captions but there aren't any there are no captions still I'm very sorry about that I don't know why there are no captions it is really starting to annoy me very much <laughs> still no captions so if you are expecting live captions I'm ever so sorry there are no live captions you can try to get them <laughs> maybe press C on your keyboard perhaps you can shout out of the window or maybe you can complain to YouTube you can say please YouTube can we please have our live captions back again because we miss them ever so much oh we are going to have a look at the cows today a lot of people last week can I say thank you very much for your lovely messages last week concerning the cows can we see more of the cows well guess what we will be taking a look at not the cows at the back of the house there are some other cows living in a field very close to where I live and we will be taking a look at those later on so we are taking a look at the the cows a little bit later on for those who are bovine fanatics and I know there are many of you out there including Mr Steve who appears to have fallen in love with the cows at the back of the house hey guess what autumn is here oh look at that now that is actually a view outside the window right now so we are looking outside you can see some of the trees are now starting to change color as autumn arrives and we are all getting used to the short days the days are much shorter now so in a few days from now it will be dark at around about 3 30 in the afternoon 
so during the winter months the days become very short indeed and that is what is happening here in the uk so certain parts of the world are now are now going to enjoy their summer months <laughs> meanwhile here in england we are having our autumn closely followed by winter yeah <laughs> I, I don't know if i like that to be honest i'm not sure to be honest hello to the live chat nice to see you here today it's a bit like it's a little bit like mission control you know when nasa are sending up their space rockets to orbit for example the moon or maybe maybe a space rocket that is going off to explore even more distant planets such as mars that's what it's like here i've got screens monitors all sorts of devices in front of me <laughs> and i hope it's all working i will keep my fingers crossed that everything works all right today thank you for joining me so many nice people here on the live chat one of the reasons why i love doing this is there are lots of lovely live chatters hello to the live chat i hope you are feeling good oh guess what luis mendez luis mendez guess what you are first on today's live chat <laughs> i don't know why i always feel so excited by the live chat when i see you there my heart glows it warms the cockles of my heart it really does so i i'm glad to see you here today i hope you've had a good week yes it is yet another crazy week on this planet as we all come to terms with our new ways of living that's all i'm saying oh by the way did you see my video during the week there is a new video on my youtube channel with captions <laughs> there is a new video where i'm walking around much wenlock taking a look around the streets and in that video i talk about the way in which we are all getting used to the new normal the new normal that is the phrase that many people are using at the moment one big change that's happened very near to where i live in wales they are now having complete lockdown in wales so that is what is happening there for 16 days they are in complete lockdown in wales fortunately <laughs> here in much wenlock we have no restrictions of course there are basic rules such as wearing your face mask when you go into a shop uh, but but yes that's it really that's the only rule we have to be careful of and be aware of and of course the usual rule of social distancing keeping two meters apart <laughs> and we all know why hello maria oh maria i'm saying hello to maria also louisa is here olga hello olga i don't know why it seems like a long time since i saw you it feels like a very long time since you were here hello also to vitas hello vitas nice to see you back as well Haile kwang is here i believe you are watching in vietnam i think so hello also to an yuin and beatrice oh jimmy from hong kong hello jimmy from hong kong i hope everything is all right there lots of things going on at the moment in that part of the world mr mohammed shosha hello mr mohammed shosha nice to see you here lolly lolly trung tomek is here hello tomek nice to see you here today we are going to be talking about a particular subject this is something i wanted to talk about today as a way of hopefully 
cheering ourselves up let's face it we all need cheering up at the moment <laughs> so i thought today we would talk about the past in a positive way so when we think about the past maybe you think about a certain period of your time when things changed or maybe perhaps when something nice happened so one of the things we will be looking at later when mr steve joins us yes mr steve will be here today definitely we are looking at your best year a memorable year that means something to you and we will be looking at words connected to it as well and the sentence game i hope you are here because the clocks have changed as i mentioned at the start of today's live stream it is now 25 minutes past two greenwich mean time g m t <laughs> confused we're all confused everything is very confusing at the moment and of course in just i think it's 10 days from now we have the presidential election taking place in the united states who will be the winner of that will it be joe or donald Ooh. i bet you can't wait to find out the answer to that we also have racer irene marcia hello marcia nice to see you here as well Haklau watching in vietnam by the way there is something different about me today can you see what is different there is something slightly different today about me can you spot the difference something has changed <laughs> no i haven't had plastic surgery how dare you how dare you what do you think of that greta <laughs> greta what do you think of that <laughs> where is she i've lost greta <laughs> greta people are saying that i i need plastic surgery what do you think about that how dare you <sighs> yes exactly exactly thank you greta <laughs> eventually we also have rosa and oh accent hello accent i haven't seen you for a long time last week we, we we briefly mentioned this last week there are many viewers that used to watch all the time and get involved with the live chat who haven't appeared for a long time and we were talking about this last week accent it's great to see you here today so you are one of my regular viewers from a long time ago so if you have been watching this live stream for a very long time please let me know and can you tell me how long you have been watching for pedro belmont oh pedro belmont is here today hello pedro nice to see you back in fact i think it was it was you who mentioned the the viewers from the past that we no longer see hello irene also racer racer says i have changed all of the clocks in spain although now many watches and smartphones they will change themselves they will change automatically which is very useful so if you have a smartphone or, or a certain type of electrical device that that will actually change the time by itself automatically isn't that good we also have sandra gonzalez it's nice to see you here today even though it is now raining in buenos aires i hope i hope the sun comes out soon i really do flower espoir by the way if i don't say hello to you please don't be angry please don't get angry but i will try to say hello to as many people as possible mr steve will be here soon he's been out in the garden again very busy and he's also been very busy in the kitchen we are going to take a look a little bit later on at what mr steve has been cooking 
or should I say baking in the oven in the kitchen oh I'm looking forward oh you know me I love my food yesterday I went into town I have my Jaffa cakes there you go you see just to prove it and look they have very generously given me 80 percent free so not only do I have these I also have these as well so this is an extra large box of Jaffa cakes but don't worry I won't eat them all at once I'm only going to have one maybe what else do I have oh yes I also have my my big bag of Watsits another snack that I enjoy eating but these are giant ones look at the size of them they're huge so I did go shopping yesterday of course I did wear my face mask the only problem is if you wear glasses if you wear glasses and you put your face mask on the first thing that happens is your glasses start to steam up you get steam condensation from your hot breath and it forms condensation on your glasses and then you can't see where you're going I actually got lost in the supermarket yesterday here in much Wenlock I got lost I couldn't see where I was going because my my glasses became so steamed up I couldn't see anything so I had to feel my way around so I could get out of the shop <laughs> I, I couldn't find the car yesterday I couldn't find where Mr Steve was he was sitting in the car waiting for me and he said what were you doing you were walking around the car park of the supermarket as if you were lost but I, I had to tell him I said I couldn't see anything my glasses were all steamed up because of my stupid coronavirus mask Ugh. so what about you do you find wearing the mask is okay or do you find it annoying have you ever forgot your mask have you been into a supermarket or a place where there are strict restrictions and have you forgotten to wear your mask oh it would appear that some people have noticed the difference there is a, a slight change mr duncan we like your beard thank you very much your beard looks so cool ha <laughs> ha highly quang thank you atiaf <laughs> atiaf asks how did I get here well one day your mummy and daddy decided to go for a lie down is that what you mean oh you mean this video how did I get to this video oh I see I don't know I mean, it's your finger it's your finger I can't control what your finger does <laughs> fortunately hello also to Lil Mr Duncan I can see that your your beard is starting to grow Mr Duncan yes I have a, a a little beard today do you like it the only problem with having a beard is it, it gets very itchy you have to keep scratching your beard so I'm not sure if I will keep it I might get rid of it I might shave it all off tomorrow we will see what happens however having a beard is still very popular here in England what about where you are do many people have beards I know some people have beards for religious purposes or religious reasons thank you Mr Duncan for your live streaming hello Sidra Sidra Mohammed nice to see you here as well so many people are here Lil says yes I have seen your new video and it looks lovely have you noticed my videos now have very good quality and there is a reason for that I might show you later but I have a new piece of equipment to make my lessons with I might show you later on if I remember I will show you hello Christina did you choose 
to grow your beard well I have a slight beard today I was feeling a little lazy because I got up I prepared my lesson and then I thought shall I have a shave and then I thought now I will see what happens if I appear on the camera with my beard I will see what the response will be hello also Rosa your video from much Wenlock is great thank you Rosa that's very kind of you to say I will be making some more videos outside walking around showing you some of the sights and also allowing you to listen to some of the sounds as well Mr Steve will be with us soon I thought it would be nice to take a little break today we are talking about our favorite years things from your life is there a significant year in your life something from your life that you remember if there is please let me know we are going to take a little break and then we are back with Mr Steve talking of remembering things do you remember the video lesson all about memory well here is an excerpt from that very lesson and then after this it's Mr Steve Hi everybody, this is Mr Duncan in England. How are you today? Are you okay? I hope so. Are you happy? I hope so. In today's lesson, we are going to look at one of the most fascinating processes to take place in the human body. The thing that helps to make all of us the individuals we are. The place where the experiences we have had and the knowledge we have acquired is stored. It is something that even now we do not fully understand. In today's lesson, we will be discussing the human memory. The important things we do and see stay in the memories of you and me. The moments from our childhood remain precious and treasured. The limit of the memory cannot be measured. As we make our way through this life with all of its joy and pain, those happy memories long since gone in time will make us smile again and again. The word memory is a noun that defines the place where information is stored. Memory can also be the thing that is being remembered. A memory of something is stored in the memory. The action of remembering involves retrieving the information from the memory. Computers have memory, as do humans, although the way they are designed and operate is not quite the same. A stored memory can be anything. Your first kiss, the first time you ever rode a bike, the day your pet goldfish died. All of these significant memories are stored away somewhere up here. In my previous lesson, I talked about our senses. I also mentioned the fact that the things we sense, such as light and sound, create information which is stored in the memory. When we see or hear something, the information created passes through the brain. It is then filtered so as to decide whether the information is important enough to be stored permanently. This system prevents the brain from becoming too cluttered with unimportant or useless information.
There are many similarities between the way in which the human brain stores information and the computer sitting in front of you now. In computer terms, stored information is called data. A computer stores data electronically in its memory. The brain transmits and stores information in the form of electricity and chemicals. When a piece of information is transmitted in the brain, an electrical pulse travels along a nerve and fires across a gap to a cell. The gap is called a synapse. There are trillions of these synapses in the human brain. The signal carrying the information is then transferred chemically where it attaches itself to the cell. One single brain cell can have thousands of these synaptic connections. The number of cells contained in the brain is constantly changing. As you learn new things, then new cells are created to store the information in. As amazing as it may sound, it is actually possible to change the structure of your brain by learning new things. Recently, it was discovered that even by carrying out a daily task in a slightly different way, it is possible to stimulate the growth of new brain cells. By using your memory, you are retrieving information that is stored in the brain cells. You are consciously searching for the information. You are recalling an event from your past. You are thinking about something. You are reminiscing. You recall. You think. You recollect. You reminisce. You remember. Of course, not all of our stored memories are happy ones. In fact, some people might say that they recall the bad moments of their past more easily than the good ones. A terrible event or a distressing occurrence can have a profound impact on the way we think. A traumatic event not only blemishes your memory, it can also affect your character. Stress and anxiety are both common side effects of going through a terrible ordeal. So while our memory gives us the ability to remember the good things, it also stores many of the things we would much rather forget. It is possible to misremember things. Sometimes we add parts to a memory so as to give it more form. Just because you remember an event does not necessarily mean that's how it actually occurred. It could be an inaccurate memory. Your memory can play tricks on you. Childhood memories tend to be made up of fleeting moments and small events that play in the mind like a short video clip. These distant memories can be happy or sad, good or bad. And there it was, one of my many, <laughs> and when I say many, I mean many, many, over 700. English lessons on my YouTube channel. Welcome. If you just joined us, yes, it is Sunday afternoon and this is English Addict Live.
to do what's this what do you mean what's this this is my head it's always been here on my shoulders oh what a shock <laughs> what a shock mr duncan i didn't know you hadn't shaved today it gave me a shock <laughs> let me guess you didn't have time you ran out of time and you didn't have time to shave today i i, I thought today i would go for the rugged look <laughs> is that just one day's growth is it uh, did you grow that in one day no this is about three <laughs> days yes i think mr duncan ran out of time today he was rushing around trying to get prepared for today's live lesson well, and he didn't have time to shave one of the problems today of course was the fact that we had to change the clocks we did so i expect he hasn't washed either for those who <laughs> what <laughs> what a strange personal insult <laughs> so it's now coming up to a quarter to three so that is the time now for those who have not changed their clocks and you are thinking mr duncan why are you so late i'm not late it is the correct time but we have changed the clocks yes, it is hello hello everybody i haven't said hello yet i've said hello to you but the shock of seeing all that growth Hmm. Uh, distracted me from saying hello to your lovely viewers. I am well known for my growth. Well, you are, you are quite tall. I'm standing on a box. Oh, people have commented about your beard, Mr. Duncan. I've been <laughs> watching the live chat. <laughs> really? Uh, most people seem to be in favour, but some people are definitely against. Oh, I see. The it's, idea. This is a bit like Brexit. Maybe we could have a referendum. Shall, shall we have a beard? Or shall we not have a beard? Are you a pro beard or are you against the beard? I think most people like it. Al uh, uh, Alessandra doesn't like it, though. It was a definite no. Oh, I see. And I think it's a no from me uh, as well. But I can't control what Mr. Duncan does. If he wants to grow his beard, then that's up to him. Well, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I don't I think if I want to grow my beard I can maybe if I if I want to grow my fingernails very long and paint them a pretty color like a lady so what Antonio from That's... Spain is new to the channel today Really Yes I've never seen so Antonio is Antonio it, is I it... noticed Oh okay then so a round of applause Antonio welcome <laughs> <laughs> this is it this is it if you like it come back next week this is as good as it gets <laughs> it doesn't get any better than this it's all downhill from now on now i've been looking at the live chat somebody called the optimist okay the optimist i do like that name mm, it's a good one good name because thinking positively staying on the bright side of life i like the name but he's asked a question several times uh -huh. <laughs> but of course you've been busy yes so you haven't noticed so he's asked the question and we'll answer it now what's the difference between community and society well community is one group society is all the groups together yes society is everybody yes so all of the the groups are all together in one large place normally we refer to it as a country or maybe a nation so the society is the general population community is one separate group so a community of people are those that get together they form maybe an organization or a group or maybe they have something in common we often say that they join in a community people that live in a certain area a certain area where people live close by we can describe as a community yes so where we live in much wenlock there's a, a community of people it's a small collection of a few hundred people and they might have views and behaviors and a slightly different accent mm. but then if we go out of much wenlock into telford into london that would be we're going out into society at large yes communities so, tend to be local mm. uh small groups of people could be a large group could be a small group uh that's the answer yeah so it's pretty good yesterday we went well no not yesterday i think it was on friday we went for a lovely walk didn't we and we discovered some new cows 
there are some new cows not at the back of the house but they are new arrivals in one of the fields that is nearby our house would you like to have a look so here is mr steve and myself first of all <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we look a little bit crazy for which I apologize right now <laughs> so, so, so we are crazy aren't what, we Mr Duncan? what's going on there Steve <laughs> well I don't know we're just doing something so <laughs> I haven't seen this Mr Duncan it's funny uh, isn't it <laughs> <laughs> okay the cows are coming I'm there, there they are surprised the cows didn't run off no, you see, you wonder why uh, we've made comments before that people in the local village don't like to talk to us. No. Well, that's probably why. That's one of the reasons why, because we walk around the countryside waving our arms around like like human windmills. So there they are, the lovely cows, aren't they lovely? And you can also see some baby cows as well. Quite a mixture of, of bovine animals when we say bovine we mean the the, the cow kingdom yes <laughs> the kingdom of cows and bulls so anything bovine oh talking of being out and about there is a farmer coming by in his tractor he might even give us a wave hi can you see us there he is yes yes look he gave us a lovely wave there Steve. i thought he was going to run you over no mr duncan he gave me a wave Look at that lovely cow. Aren't they lovely? These cows are so nice and they are now in in one of the fields close to where we live. So I couldn't resist filming them the other day. There are some baby cows. There are also some of the cows are actually expecting. They actually still have their little calves inside them. Yes, I think you are right. We look, had a look at there's them that and, one. Uh, Can you see the white one? It's, it's its stomach is moving around yes. and that is actually a little baby we think moving around inside isn't that amazing it could be just its lungs breathing but we think <laughs> they're, they're, we think that they've probably with calf yes with calf if you say something with right there. calf they are heavy with calf <laughs> a calf obviously that is a baby uh, a baby cow yes uh, it's a calf so we think that some of those, well, because there were babies with them, mm. some some very small cows, because one of them was suckling, yes, off the teat of its mother, yes, from the udders, from the udders, and we haven't seen that here. So there are, have been some newborn uh, cows. So some of them, I think, are still pregnant. Yes, I think some of the cows have not dropped their babies yet they haven't actually given birth to them yet so yes some exciting times ahead i think talking of cows this is the video that i showed last week steve that got so much attention did it yes i can't resist showing this again and then we are we are going to get down to some serious topics including food couldn't resist showing that again we showed it last week and it did get a lot of response <laughs> rosa asks rosa asks does the uh, the farmer sell the milk uh, locally well uh, he used to yes he used to have many many cows and used to sell the milk and it was sold locally here but unfortunately because of uh, economy 
uh, milk production in the UK now is not very viable because cheap milk is coming in from abroad mm. and it's no longer viable. Mm. And I say viable, it's not economically worth uh, farmers producing milk in this country anymore. It's very difficult. So a lot of farmers have stopped producing milk because we are importing much cheaper milk from abroad, which is hurting the farmers here. Yes. So they are keeping some cows, but I think they're just for breeding purposes and mm. for selling for meat. Yes. They're not, they're not uh, milking them anymore no. and selling the milk because it's just not, not worth them doing anymore. No, there's no money to be made because there, there are many ways of getting milk besides having it produced locally you see so that that's what's happening yes it's talking, very sad actually talking of food we've got to rush on because we have a lot to talk about favorite years from the past if you have a memorable year from your past maybe a year when something special happened maybe you had a nice surprise maybe it was the year you got married perhaps or maybe the year you had your first child so if there is a year that means something to you, please let me know. By the way, we should also take a look at what I'm wearing today on my feet. I haven't done it for the past couple of weeks. So this is what I'm wearing today. Oh, Steve, what do you think of that? Spotty socks. Oh, aren't they lovely? Yellow. Look at that yellow and purple and... Uh, yeah. Blue <laughs> is the other colour. White. Yes. So I love these. I don't have many yellow socks. I don't think in my life I've ever actually had yellow socks. So this is quite a quite a departure for me having yellow socks. So I love these. So that's what I'm wearing today on my feet. Talking of food. We were talking about food a few moments ago. You were very busy in the kitchen yesterday. I'm always busy, as you know, Mr. Duncan. Yes. yes. Well, I was cooking our meal in the oven, <laughs> which was uh, chili con carne. We had chili con carne again. Which is minced beef with a bit of chili and some little beans in there. <laughs> I had uh, I had a huge kidney beans. I had a huge poo today and it was your chili con carne. That's how fast it went through my body. I did hear some gurgling. Yeah. <laughs> so while the oven was on, because you know what I'm like, I like efficiency. I don't like to waste anything, including okay, then. energy. Yeah. So while the oven was cooking the chili con carne, which would take 45 minutes, okay. I thought I will make some scones or scones. Yeah. You can pronounce that two ways. Yeah. Uh, while the oven was on, the heat was there because they only take 15 minutes to cook. So, yes, I took advantage of the heat in the oven <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> to cook them at the same time. You could have just said, I cooked some scones yes yesterday. Scones or scones. We've said this yes. before. OK, it doesn't really matter. It just confuses everyone. Including well, we've me. got to say. We've so there we say. go. S scones or scones. Depending on how posh you are. <laughs> OK, there they are. Look at that, aren't they? Lovely. And I must admit, Steve, they they look good enough to eat. You're making me hungry, Mr. Duncan, showing those. You know what I wish? I wish that right now in front of us we had two slices of scone. I wish at the moment there was scones right in front of us. Maybe if I wish hard enough, maybe they will appear. Let's see, shall we? Oh, come on, scones, where are you? We want you. <gasps> There they are. Mr. Duncan. Wow, as if by magic. Would you like one, Steve? Yes, please. I'm I'm drooling at the thought. <laughs> you're you're dribbling like those cows in the field. Now, one of the first rules of doing a live stream, you must never eat food during the live stream. Would you like a scone? Thank you. Okay, mm. and me. Hmm. Apparently you're not mm. supposed to eat. Apparently it's really rude, but I couldn't resist. So there, look at that. That is Mr. Steve's beautiful scones or scones that we made yesterday. Or S C O N E S. Yes. Mm. If you're posh like me, I was brought up to say scone. But if you're common like Mr. Duncan, brought up in a sort of, you know, he would say scone. 
I think it should be scone, actually, but who knows? There is always a debate in this country. Mm. All we know is if you say scone, people okay. think you're posh. <laughs> Oh, my goodness, these are delicious. Mm. Mr. Steve. Oh, my goodness. Mm. Is there anything you can't do? No. Oh. I think everyone can do a bit of everything. <laughs> I mean, I could probably, you know, you we could all do a bit of brain surgery, couldn't we? If we tried to do it. I think human beings, we're all capable of doing pretty much anything. It's whether you can do it well or not yes. would mark you out from somebody who was good. <laughs> I don't think it's a so, good idea to let us loose in an operating theatre, operating on people's brains. I don't think that would end well. You know, everyone can do everything. It's just some people can do it very well. I mean, everyone can sing a bit. Everyone can sing a bit. You hmm. can open your mouth and sing a bit. But not everybody can sing well. I mean, everybody could, as I say, do a bit of brain surgery. I mean, you could be taught to do basic brain surgery, I'm sure. No. But whether you'd be very good at it <laughs> is another thing. <laughs> but, oh, that is lovely. Oh, my goodness. Can I just say, Steve, congratulations. Let's have another look mm. at the scones or scones. There they are. So these are actually the, the ones that Mr. Steve made yesterday. And the, the one we've just eaten. <laughs> but the, the thing is, it's not really something to boast about. No. Making scones, They're because not... they've got to be the easiest cakes to make. You just basically put flour, water, eggs. And no, just... there's no eggs. No eggs. No eggs in, well, not in, not in the recipe I am using. Strange, isn't it? It's just flour, a bit of fat. Hmm. Uh, you mix the flour and the fat together till you get sort of bread crummy type texture um, add some milk some baking powder you've got to use self-raising flour because you want them to rise uh, a bit of salt and shove them in the oven for 15 minutes and uh, they're dead easy they really are mm. dead easy mm. dead easy what's the matter Mr Duncan I was why having, have you put a mask on I was having difficulty yesterday because I was walking around the supermarket but the problem is when you wear your face mask your, your glasses steam up. If you wear glasses like me, your glasses will slowly start to steam up. So yesterday I, I got quite slightly confused in the supermarket when I was walking around because I couldn't see where I was going. Very embarrassing indeed. Yes, Saturino. They, those scones look rustic. Hmm. Rustic. R-U-S-T-I-C. Or Yeah, rustic, which means sort of rough. Something you'd made and you don't put too much care and attention into it. They're just sort of natural. Mm. You haven't formed them into a, into a perfect shape. Yes. Rustic, a bit rough. Mm. Something that looks aged. Something that looks old. Maybe, maybe an old piece of farm equipment. You might see it abandoned and it looks very rustic. It looks very scenic. We often think of the countryside as looking rustic. Look, Andy has said, do you remember last week Andy Starr yeah. said that he doesn't eat junk food? I remember that. Ah. And uh, he's obviously responding to seeing us eating those scones. And he said, I only eat apples, grapes and pears, etc. And Jaffa so Cakes. he's a healthy eater, is Andy. I like Jaffa Cakes. Look, 80%. 80% free extra. 80%, you see that, I would I would not like to buy something that said 80% free if it was food, if it was junk food. It's like if you go to the shop and you buy one chocolate bar and you get another one free, or buy two for the price of one. Okay. Or something like that, because it's encouraging you to eat more junk food, because oh. you don't save it for the next week. No. You just eat them both together, don't you? If yes. You, get something free, you don't save them up. So it's very bad. The companies are trying to get you fat. Yes, I think so. The companies are trying to get us fat. Why, why would they want to do that? If we all got fat and had a heart attacks, then we couldn't buy the food. So they don't want to get us too fat. They just want us to be plump, <laughs> like, like turkeys at Christmas. Yes, so uh, 
few people have asked for the recipe. Uh, I can't remember exactly, but if you were to Google it, mm. scones recipe, it's very easy. Mm. I think it's sort of eight ounces of flour, some <laughs> butter, okay, a bit of salt, a okay. bit of milk, yes. shove them in the oven. Uh, but That's yeah, nice. it's they're very easy to make. Every recipe book has that in. Okay, and I'm sure if you were to Google it, you would find a good recipe. Google scones. And you will find it. OK, Steve, we're talking about something interesting today. We have the sentence game as well a little bit later on, hopefully, unless we decide to talk all the time. Uh, but well, I thought today we would talk about your best year. So if I were to ask you, Mr. Steve, when was your best year? Is there a year, a certain year from the past that stands out in your mind? Not the obvious one. <laughs> What's that? Oh, OK. Well, OK, I will ask you the question again. Is there a year that stands out for you, Mr. Steve, one that you can actually remember? <sighs> it's a very difficult question, Mr. Duncan. You put me on the spot there. Well, I did tell you this morning I, I was going say, to ask. Yes, but I forgot because I've been in the garden. Okay. Here's a clue, by the way, as to what I've been doing in the garden this yes. morning. OK. <laughs> I've been cutting back a large conifer outside the uh, outside the front door. So was that your your favourite time? Was it this morning? Uh, is, is that as far back your memory goes? You notice conifers sometimes they smell like cat's pee. Okay. This one smells like cat's pee. Steve. Yes. Yeah, so uh, my, I, I well, don't... I think the most memorable one is probably the millennium. That was a very memorable year. We were in Malaysia at the time, if you remember. Well, it was just that was just one day though, wasn't it? Yeah, but a year to remember a whole year. I don't know how I'd well, remember a whole year. Just a year where something significant happened in your life. Could I say when we met? Because the millennium was everyone's significant moment. But I mean personal, something personal. All right. So I, mean, I know you want me to say this. The okay. year that we met. OK, then. I've got to say that. <laughs> Which was? Which was 1980 something. 1986. Yes, 1986. No. Ish. Eight, seven. No. <laughs> Nine. <laughs> Nine. Yes. There we go. I always forget. 1989. <laughs> 1989 is when we met. Yes, I shall always remember that de that year because, you know, that has set my life. It's strange. A lot of things. The last, next last 30 years. A lot of historical things happened. In 1989, it's very strange how many things actually occurred in 89. Can you name one thing that happened in 1989? Something historical, because a lot of things did happen. We met. Big things. Oh. Some of them good and some of them, unfortunately, not so good. But anyone, anyone know out there? What happened in 1989? <laughs> Apart from... Mr. Steve and Mr. Duncan uh, are meeting in that <laughs> fateful, fateful day. That fateful day. Oh, how my life if could have been. If only I was, uh, I was able to untie myself. If I hadn't been, didn't go out that night, my whole life would be different now. Yes. <laughs> oh, what might have been. <laughs> Fran <laughs> Francesco, are oh, you looking at the live chat? Come on. Uh, well, I'm, I am. 1989. Francesco uh, says 2020. <laughs> well, yes, we are still in 2020. Well, it's unforgettable. <laughs> it's, but, but you can't really forget this year because we're still in it. But I'm talking about the Ooh. past. The past. Palmyra says that the Iron Curtain fell in uh, 1989. Yes, yes. So, so the, the Iron Ooh. Curtain, the, the Great Berlin Wall... Was, was chipped away and it fell to the ground and everyone was running around grabbing pieces of the Berlin Wall. And some of them took them home and they rebuilt part of the Berlin Wall in their back garden as a, as a souvenir, a memento of those not so pleasant times. Well, yes. Uh, Zainab Ali says it's uh, uh, their first birthday. 1989. So we know that they are 30 years old or 31, somewhere around there. So if, if it's your first birthday, does that mean that was when you were born? 
because I would imagine your first birthday is the, the day you are born. I would imagine. Is that right? Would, would I be right there? Would I be fair in saying that? So your first birthday is actually the day you, you pop out. Your first birth. Well, no, is, it, is your first, if you say your first birthday, surely you mean a year after you were born? Oh, OK, then. Maybe. So, so your yes. first your first birthday was the first 12 months after you originally popped out. Might not be 12 months, might be only six months, you know, depending on when you were born. What? Uh, oh, yes, 12 months. Yes, yes. <laughs> Yes. It's it's always twelve months. Sorry, yes, I'm, I'm going. Who, I'm losing it. Who I, has who I've has been a, so busy, Mr. Duncan? So who, busy in the garden. Who has a birthday six months after they were born? No one. <laughs> Not a single person does that. It's, uh, a, it's a good idea though. Sue Cat, Sue Cat. Hello, Sue. Sue Cat. Sue Cat is here. Hello, oh. Sue Cat. Oh, nice to see you back. I think, though, I think Sue Cat's always here, but she doesn't always make comments. Sue Cat is nice here. Nice to see you making comments. Sue Cat. Uh, 2020. A lot of people are saying they like 2020. Uh, Sue Cat said she lost 10 kilos, so she's very happy. You like this year? I was able to lose 10 kilos. Is there someone you were trying to get rid Quite of? Quite a lot, because <laughs> most people are putting weight on during 2020 because they're in lockdown sitting at home eating biscuits and cakes and drinking lots of alcohol so well done uh, mr duncan's been eating a lot of those um uh, lewis says mm -hmm. my best and worst year in all my life was when i arrived in france oh okay what year was that lewis I, uh, I would imagine it's a long time ago. Yes, so it was a good year and it was also a bad year. So there must have been something bad happened and something good happened. Mm. I'm thinking the bad thing happened first, just thinking that might have happened. And then the good thing happened afterwards. So mm. you decided to stay. Yes. Had it happened the other way around, you might have left France. So. Well, more information, please. Sometimes bad things can happen, but they lead to good things isn't that strange so you might find in your life there is some adversity that brings heartache sadness but you might find in the future that you can actually get something good from that situation as well and, and that is life you see life quite often will throw things at you that you're you're not prepared for you are not ready for uh, but sometimes they can turn out for the best or you yourself can make the best of a bad situation. I think so. I think it is possible. Uh, Dowkey or Dookie, sorry if I've pronounced your name incorrectly, says somebody else that says that 2020 is their best year um, because they've had more time to do things for themselves. Yes. And they've spent time with their family and learn more English. Oh, so, so, oh, I see. Yes. Mm. So, so what I just said, I said that you can turn a bad situation into a good situation. And one of those ways, of course, if you have lots of time on your hands because you are unable to go out, you can find something else to do. Matthias says that 2010 uh, was their favourite year uh, in middle school. Um, yes. Happy memories of school days. Ugh, I did not like school. You didn't. And uh, I think you have uh, spoken about that on numerous occasions. I know. I did not like my school days. Not very much. Professor Michelle says, I learnt the violin. I started to study the violin in 1982. Wow. Professor. Professor. We have Michael. We have at last we have a professor. We have someone with professor in their name. Somebody who's learned, somebody who's studied to a high, uh, high level. Mm. Is it? Are you a real professor, <laughs> or is, do you just put that on your? Uh, what would you call that? Well, that? Like a pseudonym. Yes, but I think I think I'm going to assume you are a real prof professor. Uh, Sue, I was going to say something like that. Sue Cat also says. 
that her best year was 2011. Oh, OK. When she visited London and Canterbury and made a dream come true. Oh, I wonder what the dream was. I think it was to come to 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 London. Oh, OK, in then. Canterbury. So your dream actually came true and the dream was to actually come to England and visit the capital, London. Yes, so lots of people talking about their uh, in in two oh in two thousand that looks like twenty thousand one hundred oh no two thousand and ten, I started to learn English, <laughs> uh, says Palmyra. Uh, oh, missing missing uh, Lewis said he was missing his family, so maybe that's why it was so bad. Uh, when you arrived in France because you were missing your family. Oh, I see. Yes. And well, if you move to another place, if you move to a new location, it can be very difficult, can't it? Alessandra well, is still waiting for my best years to come. Now, that's a very interesting statement hmm. uh, because you've probably had good years. But to always think that there's some, a better year coming up that gives you something to look forward to. So that's a very positive statement. And in fact, I've read if you want to have a positive frame of mind, you always want you always should be optimistic and think that, oh, my best years are yet to come. Hmm. I've got more to learn, something to do, something to contribute, something that is, is going to be good. Because if you think you've had your best years, that's quite a depressing thing to think. Yes. And you're always a, that you're almost giving up. Yes. If you say, oh, my best year was, or I think I've had my best years. Well, not. I didn't say a best. I suppose your best year might be your memorable year. I know I've put best there. Yeah. But I suppose you could say memorable, a memorable year that means something to you. Yes, I, I, I know that's what you're saying, Mr. Duncan. But I was just expanding that into that philosophy of of of, of always wanting to think that there's something good in the future. Yes. Something to look forward to. <laughs> uh, there are still things to achieve, things to like, people to love, anything. Places Optimism. to go, places Optimism. to go, places to see, things to achieve. And let's face it, let's face it, in this particular year, a lot of people have been trying to think ahead. And of course, many people thinking of next year. Hopefully next year, things will start to resolve themselves. Although I think we we still have a long way to go. To Redwan says uh, 1985 in August, discovering Paris. Oh, yes, actually, I had a lovely that was a memorable year for me when I spent when you were away in uh, China. Mm -hmm. I did a lot of traveling and I went to Paris with some friends uh, for a few days. And I had a lovely time visiting all the lovely places because I hadn't really been to Paris properly before. That was a memorable year to me as well. Uh, yeah. My memorable year or, or one of them, uh, 1991. Do you know why? 1991 so we'd been together two years okay but that's that's so what happened two years after we met in 1991 it, it was the first time i ever took a flight i had never Ooh. been i had never been on an airplane that's true until 1991 when we went to greece and that was my first ever plane trip and, and i was with you so you got to share my first ever experience of flying. I must be honest with you and I'm going to be honest. I was a little bit nervous, but also excited at the same time. He was screaming <laughs> and I had to hold his hand. <laughs> I'm only joking. Yes. It was exciting, though. Yes, it, that, it is exciting when you meet somebody and you go off on holiday together and meet places it's all very exciting isn't it yes uh, but the first time you do something uh, so, time. so the first time I went in an aeroplane took a flight went up into the sky and I was higher than the birds mm. uh, Javad says my best year is 2019 because I got married oh Ooh. do 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 well you would have to say that I can only assume you're partner is uh, is watching at the yes. same time i <laughs> know no it's genuine yes. it's got to be if you marry somebody that's got to be 
a, a significant year for yes. you. Yeah, that's it. I'm sure. I'm sure it was. It was a wonderful experience, and it still is, of course. I'm sure. Well, what are we talking oh. about next, Mr. Duncan? I was waiting for another thing. You see, uh, no, I'm. Oh. Christina says 1990 was when I first went in a helicopter, a helicopter flight. You will never get me. You will never get me in a helicopter. They they always look like the most unsafe thing in the world to fly up into the sky in a cable car is another one so you see the cable cars they look very precarious so if the if the wire that's supporting them breaks the cable car will fall to the ground just like a helicopter so the rotor blade going around if that stops working there's no other way of of making the helicopter fly it will just plummet to the ground so no, no. you're not a fan of helicopters are no. you at least in an airplane you've got a pretty good chance still of of flying and, and landing not sure about that mr duncan i think so well if it's a passenger airplane they can they can glide but they can't land very well yeah uh but yes, I mean, one thing we've noticed, if you get incredibly rich, rich enough to buy yourself a helicopter. OK. There are always several times a year. Mm -hmm. There are always um, news stories of somebody crashing in a helicopter and dying. <laughs> and it turns out to be somebody quite wealthy, a businessman. Mm. Uh, we had somebody that owned a fo fo famous football team last year that died in a helicopter crash. I think... If I ever get mega rich, which I'm hoping to off your English teaching channel, Mr. Duncan, <laughs> remind me never to get a helicopter because, you know, I think uh, you're increasing your chances of dying early. Any type of light aeroplane, anything like that. Stick to commercial aero commercial flights, well-known companies. OK. And uh, you should be safe. <laughs> I'm just I'm just on about the structure of the actual vehicle so that so aeroplanes have wings uh, and even if the engine stop working the, the 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 plane can sort of glide and sort of you've got uh, a chance you've, you? you've got a chance helicopter you're just going to drop like a stone the other one is hot air balloon you will never get me hot inside you will never get me in a hot air balloon ever for the same reason if it goes <laughs> that's it you're just going to well, I think they're quite safe. The only thing is we have seen stories where the because obviously you're using a, a big gas cylinder with a giant flame. Yes, th this is uh, something that, that I, I, I object to. You know, I'm not going to go into a little picnic basket that's tied to some rope. And then just above my head, there's like a thousand tons of sort of what is it? Helium? Or, oh um, no! It'll be it'll be something like propane or something propane. like that. Highly flammable. I don't know what it is. So, so compressed fi flammable gas. So it fills the balloon with all of this hot air, but of course there is just a very thin cloth that is holding you up in the sky, and if something went wrong with that, maybe it bursts into flames. Well, or, or maybe it rips. You can't save yourself. Maybe you could all stand in the basket and flap your arms as hard as you can. But I don't think it will work. Thing is, if you worry about everything, I mean, the, the safety record of hot air balloons must be incredibly high because you don't hear of many hot air balloon tragedies. No. But we've all seen probably pictures of hot air balloons where something's gone wrong with the flame and it's set fire to the cloth mm. material and and it's burning and dropping to the ground yeah. that is quite rare <laughs> it does that quite quickly by the way it's like it's like passenger jets going wrong it happens incredibly rarely but yes. when it does you know you, you worry about it so yes. you, you can't think about this every day going out driving in a car is far more what? dangerous what? than anything else most okay. of us will ever do but that's probably because more uh, people are doing it at one time no it is just the odds of you 
dying in a car are far, far higher than dying in a balloon or a helicopter <laughs> or an aeroplane. What about slipping uh, over in the bathtub? <laughs> well, yes, probably more chance of that. What about tripping over a ham sandwich? Not a ham what sandwich. What about sliding on your next door neighbour's dog's poo? Could you slide over, slip, hit your head and die? Imagine that on the death certificate. Cause of death, next door neighbour's dog's poo. <laughs> Well, when you think every year in this country, probably about 7,000 people die in car accidents and probably at least double that are seriously injured or might have life-changing events. Uh, I mean, if 7,000 people died every year in aeroplanes, okay. it would be a, you know, a, a national tragedy. It would be, be, you'd never go up in a plane. Well, there'd be, there'd be one falling out the sky outside our window right now. Yes. So know. putting it in perspective, you think you're safe in the car, but in fact you're far less safe in a car than you are in any other form of transport, practically. Yeah. Anyway, uh, let's lighten the, loo the, <laughs> lighten the mood a little bit. You, know, you normally like talking about death, <laughs> Mr Duncan. You've made lots of videos about it. Lots of videos. I've made one. That's not that's not lots. So today we are talking about your best year. We might say that your best year or something nice can be in the form of a memory, a memory, a memory might spring to mind. It will suddenly appear in your mind. It will spring to mind. Something pops into your head you remember something something suddenly appears in your mind you think about it you remember something something pops into your head maybe you recollect something mm. you recollect something so something that happened in the past a memory you think about and then suddenly you, you remember it as if you are living it right now you recollect or recollect or recall an event. Yes. I recall to mind the days when life was uh, lovely and we just enjoyed going out to nightclubs and drinking and laughing with friends. I recall those happy happy days. That sounds terrible. It could be yes. It's a bit of a bit of a poncy way probably of describing your past. <laughs> poncy. What? I recall you, you're, you're calling up memories, happy memories. Could, okay. be, could be unhappy memories. We, of we always think of the past through rose coloured glasses. We always think of the past as being nice and lovely. Quite often we will talk about the, uh, the good old days. Why can't it be like the good old days when things were lovely and people were nice to each other? It was never really like that. Never really. Palmyra. Um, had a gift from her son mm -hmm. on her birthday, uh, which was a ride in a hot air balloon. Oh, OK. So did you go on that ride? I've been on. I've been in a hot air balloon, mm. uh, but it was tethered. It was a tethered balloon. OK, then what does that mean? It means there was a bit of rope holding it down. It was but, tied down. But... but that wouldn't stop it from falling to the ground if something went wrong. It didn't go that high. <laughs> OK, then. But tethered balloon. How high up? I don't know. It was several hundred feet. Oh, OK. That, I think that would still that would still cause some damage. You might break an arm, leg, spine, skull, everything. <laughs> 200 feet. I don't recommend it. Yes, I've never been on a, in, in a big sort of long balloon flight. Oh, I, I think I would do it. I don't think I would be frightened. I would I would look at the uh, the company and its sort of safety record. Um, it's just like going on a flight on, on an aeroplane. There's a conversation. I would love to hear that conversation. Hello, is that uh, Mr Smith's balloons? Would you mind telling me how many times your balloons have plummeted out of the sky and killed all, all of the occupants in the basket? Oh, only six. Only six times. OK, then. Well, um, yeah, I think I will pass. Uh, goodbye. 
yes, they're not going to admit to it, but it could be on the Internet. You can look at the safety record of, of, of all the major airlines. And in fact, I did do that. I spent some time researching that once. Uh, <laughs> I won't say who had the best or worst, but you can look that up. Yes. It might help your decision yes. uh, as to which airline company you should go with. Yes. They may cost you more, but, you know, how much is your safety worth? That's it. What? A certain taste, sound or smell might take you back to a past time. <gasps> yes, I think so. Yes. Sometimes, well, for example, when you're cooking or, or baking, quite often I will think of my, my mother in the kitchen making our, our supper or our dinner or lunch. And, and so sometimes a smell or a sound or a certain taste can take you back in time. It's very strange that how, how it has that power. It triggers a memory. Mm. The sound triggers a memory mm. in your brain. And I get that a lot. And it's usually smells at school. So sometimes I'll get it might be some polish, furniture mm. polish or something that something was used on the floor or, as you say, something that was cooked in the canteen. Mm. And suddenly that smell, you might not have smelled it for years, but it mm. takes you back to a past event, like mm. at school, for example. Yes. I, if Like a classroom has a certain smell. Yes. It has a smell of sort of the wooden desks. Yes. And... The uh, polished floors. The polished floors. Yes. And if you go somewhere and that smell is there, it takes you back. It takes yes. you back. Uh, you recall a memory from the past. Yes, it's very interesting. The power of memory. And we still don't know how the brain does it. That's the that's the interesting thing. We, of all the things we know about the human body, we still don't understand how these things work. How does memory work? We don't know. How how can you link a smell or a taste or a sound to something in your past? How does it work? We don't know. We we still don't really understand how these things work. The mechanism of memory is still one thing that we really don't understand it all about the human brain we don't really know the the physics of how it works how 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 can i remember my first day at school even though it happened many many years ago i can still see it in my mind but how we don't I, we don't know i think your memories are f the, the, the more powerful the event uh, the more the more that memory is embedded in your brain mm. So very significant events, hmm. uh, for whatever reason, your brain will hold that memory uh, in a way that it doesn't hold other events. Yes. So you can have one significant event in one day 30 years ago, but you won't recall all the other events of that day. Yes. Because I don't think physically your brain can hold literally every memory every event that ever happened that's it that's one of the things i mentioned in my memory lesson by the way about short term and long term memory and how it actually works so those all of those subjects are actually covered in my memory lesson and it is available on my youtube channel memories can be treasured or relived as a form of comfort something you remember yes. so memories can be very useful Happy memories, nice moments from your life that you relive or remember. That's one of the reasons why I love filming things. I love taking photographs and filming things, things that Steve does, things that we both do together of my family. So I have lots of photographs of my mother. Of course, my mother not very well at the moment. However, there has been some good news about that because it looks as if they might be allowing us to chat to mother, mother mum, face to face on using I think it's Skype so that might be happening and as we get older we notice that uh, older people tend to live more in the past mm. quite often they will particularly if they're not doing much with their lives they will keep recalling memories from the past and tell you tell you stories mm. of, of when they were children of what happened in their lives and they'll Think back on the happy memories. And it's funny how the human mind the, will will filter out a lot of the bad memories and just recall and you'll just retain the good memories quite often. Don't know why that happens. Um, 
Sandra Gonzalez says that if I smell a certain fragrance, that uh, reminds her of her mother. Yes. Uh, and that's true. Um, there's a certain uh, aftershave. Uh, <laughs> your, your mother used to wear aftershave. This is I'm learning something new all the time about Steve's family. No, my father always oh, okay. used to wear Old Spice aftershave. <laughs> okay. Old Spice. It was a popular, a popular fragrance aftershave for mm. for men. I still use it in the 1970s and 80s. It I, was, I use it now. Well, that's what I mean. I hadn't smelt it for years and years and years, but it was a very strong smell. And men used to wear it. It was sort of tough men. Okay. It was it was advertised on the television at the time. I think there was somebody surfing. A macho man was surfing and. Old Spice was being splashed all over. Okay. And it was, you know, it was for men, real yes. rugged men. Well, of course it's for men. It's well, you know what I mean, but it was advertised because obviously in the, back in the 70s, 80s, men wearing a fragrance could be seen as being a bit feminine. So they had to obviously think of launching this product and, and, and just placing it f and getting people to buy it because, you know, they're seen as a real man. OK, then. So then for some bizarre reason, you bought some. Yes. And put it on, and immediately it took me back to my father putting on this aftershave. That's it. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm a, that's the only memory that I'm bringing to you about your father. Well, I had a friend <laughs> uh, when I was at uni. Okay. Oh, is this your weird friend? Is this the nutter? All my friends are nutters. <laughs> I'm only joking. Um, uh, he always wore Aramis aftershave. Okay. And uh, whenever I smell Aramis aftershave now, that particular Aramis original, a men's fragrance, uh, went out. It was popular in the 80s. OK. And of course, lots of other fragrances. But if I ever, if I ever smell that now, which isn't very often because it's not so popular now, immediately takes me back to 1980. OK. Uh, and when I was at uni. So it's funny. Wow. Smells are very powerful, so thank you for that. Uh, it's always taken as many years for you to tell that story. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so the past. Apparently, I look sexy with my with my beard. I look. Se <coughs> Pardon. I look sexy. Apparently. Not from here. You don't. Beatrice says my father used Old Spice many years ago. I still use it now just because it soothes my face when I have a shave. And the men out there will know after you have a shave, quite often your skin on your face will be very sensitive. So you put aftershave to soothe the sensitivity. Well, that was part of the macho thing, wasn't it? Yeah. A man, you shaved. You got raw skin everywhere, and then you can, then you put alcohol all over, and you want the pain. Ha <laughs> ha That 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 was part of the macho image of Old Spice. Okay, I don't think it was pain because whenever Dad used to put it on, it was oh oh oh, you know, because he obviously get little cuts when you shave. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> what what was your father shaving with? A pair of garden shears. <laughs> well, you always. I mean, if you've just sh shaved, putting something that's alcohol based on that skin is always going to be a bit painful. Anyway, a good memory can lift you up while a bad memory can leave you scarred. So we might talk about good memories, lots of good memories. Christmas with my family, all of my relatives would visit and we'd all come round. And quite often my father and my granddad would get drunk and they would start fighting. <laughs> I'm not joking. Fighting. <laughs> my, my father and my granddad would often fall out. And really? they'd start fighting and shouting at each other. They, they would normally have a lot to drink and then they'd start arguing. I can still see my granddad red faced <laughs> arguing with my dad. <laughs> Happy memories. <laughs> you had an interesting upbringing. Mr. Oh, Duncan. Yeah, Are we I, playing the sentence game? Today? Oh, my God. You just know what? Out of interest. I've just forgotten about the sentence game. It's a good job. I'm here. That's it's, why I'm here. It's a good job. You're here, Steve. So memories can be good. Memories can be bad. Sometimes it's good to hold on to memories. Sometimes it's good to let go of certain memories so you can move forward with your life. Sometimes living in the past is not a good thing to do. Old Spice, they used to call it the mark of a man. OK, that was the advertising. Oh, good. 
are we getting any money from old spice sergio says uh, hello old spice if you're watching can you send some money because we may have just doubled your profits i was talking about uh, it being painful when you uh, when you put old spice on, on on a shaved skin yes and sergio says it depends where you shave oh well yes that's <laughs> it there are many places now oh let's get on with the sentence game says tomic well, we know why, because you like that. You always seem to beat everybody. Yes, let's play the sentence <laughs> game. We, are, we have 20, we have about 25 minutes because I did actually start five minutes late. So, in fact, we have 25 minutes. Let's play <laughs> the sentence game. You can join in, Steve. No, I'll let you. People do like your beard. Most people seem to like it. Oh, OK. But then, you know, I don't know if it's mainly the women who are oh. liking your beard. OK. Thank you, ladies. And maybe some gentlemen as well. Maybe some of the men are getting turned on as well. By Not my, according to the live chat. By my rugged, manly appearance. Do you like it, ladies? You like it? Like my rugged, manly, macho appearance? Is it doing it for sentence you? Sentence game, Mr. Duncan. Sentence game. Keep sentence. focused, focused. Focused, focused. It's, it's brilliant that you're telling me that. That might be the most ironic thing that's ever happened. <laughs> if uh, French people say the word, uh, not being... Uh, uh, disparaging to French people here but uh, we had somebody French who worked for our company okay and uh, whenever she said she was in sales she was like a sales manager okay and whenever she said the word focus oh I know what you're gonna do yes uh, yes don't, don't say anything else Steve because sounded like a swear yes, word yes so we, we must focus focus but when, when when she said it with her French accent, it sounded like she was saying something else. Something very rude. And that's... And we always used to laugh. That's as far as we're going with that one. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> it's the sentence game, everyone. Are you ready to play the sentence game without any more messing around, without any more hanging about on the street corner, looking suspicious? Here is today's first sentence game. Oh, I always like to something, something beginning the, with L on the, letters on the something side of life. So this is I think this is an easy one to start with. So for those who don't know what this is, this is the Internet. <laughs> oh, sorry. No, I mean, this is the sentence game. <laughs> I'm sure you know what the Internet is by now. The sentence game. I will show you a sentence. There are some missing words. And underneath there are, there are some clues. So today we have the sentence game, random words, random letters. As always, the first to get it gets a kiss. The first, <laughs> the first to get it can have a little touch. They can touch my beard. It's like stroking sandpaper. Mm. That's it. I always like to something on the something side of life. Well, Tran. Tran. Uh, you have a word that fits the first one. Yeah, you could use that word. It's not quite what we're after, but uh, you could definitely use that first word. Hmm. Hmm. Yes. Yes, that's quite good. Lean. Uh, yes, and uh, Maura has said live. Yes, I always like to live. Yes, yeah. Hmm, that's, that's, that's interesting. Yes, two interesting choices oh. there. And uh, Sergio had the, definitely had the second word, and so did Maura. Uh, Tomic <laughs> has managed again. To get both of the words that you have suggested fits in there. So, uh, but there are other alternatives. Yes, you so, might have uh, you might have different words you could put in there. So, yeah. So, uh, 
Mora, yes, that, that does fit what you've put, really. I think. I think we've got the answer coming. For the first time today, we have Mr. Cockrell. A lot of people have complained. I had a complaint, by the way, about Mr. Cockrell. They said, Mr. Duncan, why do you always refer to your cockerel as your cock? You can say cockerel or rooster. You don't have to say cock, even though it might raise one or two smiles out there in YouTube land. But you must be mature when you are doing your show. OK, Mr. Cockerel. I agree. Mr. Cockerel. Here he comes. I've been warning Mr. Duncan for weeks about that, this. My cock is about to spring up. <laughs> there it was. My, my lovely little cockerel. Mr. Cockerel. It annoys me every time you do that, Mr. Duncan. It's not professional. It is, though. That's what it is. It, I, yes, but you're doing it to try and... It's your mind that's rude, yes, you see. Yes, you're it, trying to get us to, you know, no, you know what you're doing. When Mr. it Duncan. leaves my mouth, it's clean. But when it goes into your ear, maybe it's not. It's it's, not. it's you. It's not. You're, you're, you're the rude one, not me. It's not. Anyway, what's the answer, Mr. Duncan? Um, what are we doing? <laughs> the sentence game. The, sentence the first game. one. The answer is bing. Oh, I always like to look on the sunny side of life. You look on the sunny side of life. So if you look on the sunny side, what would you say, Steve? Optimistic. Hmm. You're always looking on the bright side would be another alternative word. Uh, but uh, people, some people have said live as the first word. You could have live. It would fit. Uh, and we also had... Yes, live. Mm -hmm. Or lean. Tran said, said lean. Lean uh, on lean. the... Lean. Yeah, hmm. sort of lean in terms of, you know, what you're thinking. Yes, yes. that would fit. Well, we, we often use the word lean to show preference. You might lean towards something. Yes. So lean towards can mean you are, you are, your position has changed. So maybe I lean towards Mr. Steve like this and then Mr. Steve will lean away or you can have something you you like or you favor you can lean towards it with your your feeling your opinion yeah you lean towards so something. you're le in this example you're leaning towards a positive outlook yes that's good a I, sunny so the, that fits I like that I like that a lot I like it when we do the sentence game and people come up with alternatives that mm. fit and that's the thing that's why english is so interesting because sometimes you might have one choice but there might be other other possibilities as well here we go here's our second of the sentence game you should you should something his promises with a something of something what <laughs> what could it be four letters beginning with t Five letters beginning with P and four letters beginning with S. Mm -hmm. You should. Ah, uh -huh. you should something his promises with a something of something. Mm. Yes. But what? So this is a kind of we might use this as an idiom, I suppose. So you might be referring to an idiom or maybe just something that is metaphoric. So you are. Yes, maybe a person tells you something, but perhaps you are a little bit sceptical or maybe you are cautious. You don't want to believe that person too quickly or maybe you don't believe them at all. You don't believe a single word they're saying. Oh. Well, we've already got a correct answer. Oh, OK. Well, that was quick. We have. Who yes. is it? Well, let's. Let's wait for a few uh, more. I, I can't believe we had a correct answer straight away. Look it at that. It was very quick. It's not Tomek, is it? Well, it hmm. was actually Mora. Oh, Mora. Well done. Mora was very quick. Look, you get a thumbs up. Rosa got the first word. You get one of Mr. Duncan's golden thumbs. Look and now it. everyone's getting it. Vitas, Alessandra. Uh, oh, Connell's here. Hello, Connell. Nice Connell's to see. Just arrived. Wow, nice to see Connell as well. Thank you very much for joining me. 
a long time since we saw you. Yep, this one's out there, Mr. Duncan. This one, which I thought would be quite difficult to get. Oh, OK. A lot of people have got it right. Pretty good. And Maura got it just like that. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> straight into my... <laughs> now, for those who are watching in Asia, I know that for many people it will be very late at night now because we've changed the clocks, you see. So because all of the clocks have moved around, it is a little later now in Asia. So I'm very sorry about that. There's nothing I can do about it, unfortunately. But we turned our clocks back one hour last night, which, of course, affects many people who are watching ahead of us because yes. it means now it's much later. So if, if it was midnight when, when we started, it would be 1 a.m. when we start, which, of yes. course, for many people is too late. Too late. Yes. So, yes, the answer's out there, Mr. Duncan. Mm. You should something his promises with a something of something. So are we ready for, for Mr. Cockrell? Would you say Mr. Mr. Cockrell should now appear? Yes. OK, then. By the way, Mr. Steve, Mr. Steve is very lucky because today Mr. Cockrell is very close to Mr. Steve's left leg. So you might notice now and again, Steve will be looking very happy as Mr. Cockrell is standing right next to him. It's right on my right in my face, Mr. Duncan. Yeah. I thought, <laughs> wow, there, there is that I could really answer that. I know, but you won't because we have to keep it clean. There are two answers that I could give to, to what Mr. Steve has just said, and both yes. of them are disgusting. Oh, the answer. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> but here we go. The answer. Everyone's got it now. Everybody knows. So let's just confirm that by pressing the magic button. Bing. Yes. You should take his promises with a pinch of salt. Yes. To take something with a pinch of salt. What does that mean, Steve? That means you don't take it seriously. Hmm. Yes, that's it. You don't take it seriously. Hmm. So it. If, for example, somebody was promising to marry you, mm. for example, in this case, we've said a man, his, and uh, and uh, you're discussing with a friend of yours mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you say to your friend, oh, my boyfriend said he's going to marry me. And uh, your friend might say, huh, your friend doesn't trust this person that you're going out with and they say to you don't trust him take what he says with a pinch of salt yes in other words he's probably doesn't really mean it don't believe what that person says because they are probably lying but you should take it with a pinch of salt yes so don't take it seriously by the way pinch just means something that you are holding between your finger your forefinger and your thumb a pinch of something Maybe when you're cooking, you might add a pinch of salt to your ingredients. Yes, it's like if you were to pinch somebody, pinch. Mm. You'd do that, wouldn't you? Pinching, pinch, be painful, yes. wouldn't it? Yes. So if you do that with salt, you're just taking enough salt to be held in those two fingers. Yes. So it's pinch. actually it's actually a very loose measurement, a measurement, a, pi a pinch. Sometimes you see that in recipe books, add a pinch of salt. Pinch. And it just means take enough that you can hold in your two, in your finger and thumb. Something like that. Yes. yes. But it also means don't take something seriously. That's it. So don't believe it. Maybe you should have some doubt about the truth of the thing that has been said to you. Oh. Do we have time for another one? I think we do. I think we have time we for an, another sentence game, Steve. This is really, really good. I'm, I'm getting quite excited. We have 10 minutes left. Don't forget, I'm back with you next Sunday. Every Sunday we are here live for two hours from 2 p.m. UK time GMT. Oh. As if as if it wasn't confusing enough already. Here we go, then. Another sentence game. Are you ready, Steve? I'm Ooh. always ready. I can hardly stand the excitement. Oh, oh, we have three, 
three missing words right we we something to reach an something beginning with a on the new something eight letters beginning with c yes so we have f six letters a nine letters c eight letters that's a tricky one i think mr duncan very tricky i normally get these but i haven't got that one yet mm. Hmm. Interesting, <laughs> Mr. Duncan. It's the only thing that is. <laughs> Any answers coming through yet? 30 seconds haven't passed, Mr. Well, Duncan, which is well, the delay. Shall I just stand here in silence? Well, you could think of something to say. We something, six letters beginning with F, to reach an... Ah, <laughs> Tomek. Ah, <laughs> you know, you know, I'm thinking of disqualifying Tomek. I'm sorry, you're you're, you're just too clever. Are, are you are you uh, hacking into Mr. Yeah. Duncan's computer? Yes. Can you see? Are you outside my window watching? Can you see my screen with all the answers? I think Tomek's hacking into your computer. I think so. Yes, I think he's he's. He's installed something on my computer when I wasn't looking. Well, he's cleverer than I am because I couldn't get it. Mm. But I got the middle one. Uh, so, well done, Tomek. Although we're not necessarily revealing that it's correct. <laughs> Are you a member of Mensa, Tomek? Do you have a very high IQ? Mm. Vitas has got it. Do you know what your IQ is? No, and I don't want to know. <laughs> Is it in single figures? <laughs> Tran says that Tomek's got a big brain. What, what, what happens if your IQ is only about eight or, or nine or, or six and a half? What happens then? You can get a job in, in local government, <laughs> probably. Uh, Palmyra says that Tomek's in office profile, whatever that is. Oh, I see. What's office profile? Office profile. Well, I don't I don't use office profile. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's an app. Well, mm. office is a is a program, isn't it? Yes. Microsoft. Yes. Maybe. Hmm. Hmm. What? <laughs> I don't. What are you thinking, Steve? Well, maybe maybe, the, maybe there's a, there's a, a program that will give you answers. No, we're assuming yes. that Tomek has a big, large brain. A huge a huge and, uh, cerebral cortex and is very good at english and can work these out all on his own i think so yes not not like mr steve when he's adding things up he has to use his fingers <laughs> what was it last week was it five eight, eight take away five <laughs> one two three four five it means it's three yes but last week you seemed to doubt whether that was correct <laughs> which which was quite funny actually so well done. Maybe, you know, hold back a little, give people a chance uh, in the future. Yes. <laughs> All we are saying is give everyone else on the live chat a chance. But Tomek is correct. And I'm going to look up Office Profile, Palmyra, uh, to see what that program can do. Yes. But I think Tomek's hacking into your computer. Yes. Oh, my goodness. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope nobody's hacking into it. So <laughs> for various reasons, all of my secrets, you see, are stored in my computer. What did you think I meant? Here we, here we go. Here's the answer. Are you ready, Steve, for the answer? Yep. I almost pressed the wrong thing then. <laughs> I almost pressed the choo-choo. <laughs> I pressed the choo-choo. I didn't mean Good. to. I didn't want to press the choo choo. Yeah, the choo choo will do. We've got the answer, Mr. Duncan. Instead, we have <laughs> Mr. Cockerell. It's in my face again. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, what is the answer? Was Tomek correct? Was, was Tomek correct? Can Tomek go to the front of the classroom? I just think Tomek wants kisses. I think that's what it is. <laughs> I would imagine that's the last thing Tomek wants. <laughs> is one of your 
It's going to be dark early tonight, Mr. Duncan, and I've got to clear up all the clippings. Yeah. That I have I have taken off this bush outside our front is that, door. Is that the tree? Is it? It's not a very big tree. <laughs> no, that's uh, that's just that's how much I've taken off the whole width of the uh, all the way around this bush. It smells. You know what it smells? It smells like toilet cleaner. Yes, well, conifers often have this strong smell of sort of uh, pine, piney, or sometimes I think they smell like cat's pee. Yes, so you said uh, that's quite nice. So you could have it there, sort of like a, as if we're, we're behind the bushes, we're hiding in the bushes. Giovanna says Tomek wins a Jaffa cake. You can have one of my Jaffa cakes if you want, Tomek. There we go. Look, I've got I've got a whole box. I think he wants a kiss. Eighty percent. 80% Oh <laughs> Tomek did want kisses You're not supposed to do that You're supposed to be socially distancing You're not You're not allowed to blow kisses to anyone Even through the internet Haven't you heard of computer viruses? It's quite safe Mr Duncan Dear me Very Well if Tomek comes down with something now Very uh, Then he can blame me Very irris <laughs> Very irresponsible here Enos is, uh, is is just arrived. Would you like the answer, um, <laughs> Steve? Yes. Ding. We fa we failed to reach an agreement on the new contract. We failed to reach an agreement on the new contract. That's it. How did you choose that particular sentence, Mr. Duncan? I don't know. Sorry, Enos, but we're going now. <sighs> Well, five minutes. We still have five minutes because I started late, you see. So we've only oh. technically we've been on for. Let me just see. We've been on for one hour and 55 minutes, you see. So we still have five minutes. We have to we have to stick to our contract, you see, our contracted hours. Well, two, I two can hours. go, though, can't I? Well, you can go if you want. If you I don't want to go. Well, be like that then. Well, what do you think? Shall I stay or go? Do you want Mr. Steve to stay or do you want him to go? Well, Enas, well, we've got to do something for Enas in five minutes to make it worth his while coming on. Yes. OK, we'll stay uh, on for five more minutes. Maybe you didn't realise the clocks have changed Mr. in the UK. That's probably why you're late on. Mr. Steve uh, will stay with us, I think. What shall I do? Do a dance, sing a song? Uh, or, or, or none or, of the above. What shall we do then for the next five minutes? We can have another can... sentence game. Go on then. OK, I've got I've got a couple of more here. A couple of more sentence games. This is bonus time now. We're into <laughs> bonus time. <laughs> you spat all We're into over extra me. time. Did you I spit all over me? Then? <laughs> Disgusting. I spit all over you. Hang on, let, me, uh, let me mop that down. There we go. That's like my nan there used to do. <laughs> my granny used to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but if you, but your mother used to do that or your gran if you got some mud on you they used to spit into a into a tissue and wipe it off i know i mean just wouldn't do that now but my you? my mother wouldn't use a tissue she just spit in my face anyway <laughs> and that's it <laughs> that's that's all she would do she'd just spit at me and that was it <laughs> he's had a scarred upbringing oh, if you yeah. have had a scarred upbringing it means that you're you're it's like having an actual physical scar, but a mental scar. Yes. Uh, in that, uh, you know, it's always creating unhappiness. You have no idea what I've been through. Here's another one then. Oh, OK, then. This is interesting. <laughs> I don't remember what the answer to this is. <laughs> uh, well, you don't have to. You've got the, well... We've got Tomek. Tomek can solve Tomek is, is, is I hacking don't need... into your computer as we speak. I something... A sudden something to something. His something. I. I. What. What happened? Maybe I was having a dizzy spell when I typed this, or maybe my glasses were steamed up. Four words. We've got to think up four words, Mr. Duncan. I know. We're, we're really testing Tomek now. Come on, Tomek. You, you're going to have to put your brain into third or fourth gear. <laughs> Tran oh. wants me to sing I Want It My Way. Do you mean... Uh, I did it my I way. I did it my way. And now the end is near. And so we will both face the we, final curtain. Yes. My I friends, friends, I'll, I, say, I'll it say it clear. Of this, of which, 
I'll state my I'm certain, something like that. I'll state my case of which, of I'm, which certain. I'm certain. I've, I've had lived a life that's full. Mm -hmm. I've travelled each and every byway. Yeah, but? But? More. No, more. Much more. Much more than this. Than this. I, I did, did it my way. way. Oh, well, We've done it. that's a copyright strike from YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> well done. I something a sudden something to something his something F four oh. four letters D mm -hmm. six letters S four letters F four letters come on Tom Eck uh, yes yes we're really testing your brain now well, Giovanna has <laughs> come up with an interesting answer okay which sort of fits uh, but we don't want spitting, really, do we? We don't want spit. Uh, I mean, the words fit, I've got to say. Lewis is off. Bye, Lewis. Well, Palmyra. Oh, Lewis Mendez. Wow, Lewis. Can I just say Lewis? Lewis Mendez. Luis Mendez. Is that a goodbye? No. Oh, it's a correct answer. Where? Luis Mendez. I didn't see that. I oh my goodness. I'm stunned. Ah. I am stunned. Luis. I am stunned. Luis was going, and then his parting shot to us is a correct answer in the yeah. sentence game he see now lewis wants us to remember this moment forever so this will be the moment that i will always remember when lewis said goodbye but also gave the correct answers to the sentence game at the same time what a way to end <gasps> well done so i suppose we, we will have mr cockerell for one more time and then we'll give the answer. I something a sudden something to something his something. <laughs> it could have been anything really when you think about it. Mr. Cockrell, come on. <laughs> oh. Time to wake up. <laughs> so what's the answer, Mr. Duncan, as you have suggested? Okie doke. Okie dokie, pig in a pokey. Here we go. The answer to today's final sentence game before we disappear for another week is. Bing. Ah, oh, I felt a sudden desire to pew, slap his face. I felt a sudden desire to slap his face. You might also say I felt the sudden desire so some people might say i felt the sudden desire or i felt a sudden desire to slap his face some people have said spit spit his face but you would have to say in spit in his face for yes. that to be grammatically correct yes so if you spit at someone you spit in their face you spit mm. in their face because that's where you are aiming for mm. so there we go that's it i think that's it shall we call it a day we are now going to call it a day we are going to wrap up we are going to put away our toys for another week <laughs> have you enjoyed it steve no you know what i've enjoyed i have, I have. my favorite moment from today's live stream was when we ate the scone that's all I've been thinking about is going in there and having another one. Yes, we are going to have a cup of tea this week. Not a tea cake. We're going to have another scone. Or could we have a scone and a tea cake? Oh, that's just greedy. I think that is what's going to happen. That is very greedy. Goodbye to everyone. It's been lovely, Mr. Duncan. It's okay. been lovely to see you all. It's been wonderful. Let's see you all next week. I hope so. Bye bye for now. Mr. Steve is now going. You'll um, have to push me off. Mr. I will. Duncan. I will move you forward slowly as Steve goes into the kitchen. As if by magic, he has disappeared. <laughs> <laughs>
there are so many things going on here that I can never tell you about but it's always very busy when Steve is around <laughs> for various reasons it's almost time to go I can't believe it's time to say goodbye I hope you've enjoyed today's live stream two hours have gone by very quickly I hope you've enjoyed this live stream and I hope you will enjoy next week's live stream as well I hope so because it hasn't arrived yet by the way next Saturday is a special day because it is my 14th anniversary 14 years I've been on YouTube next Saturday will be the anniversary of course we're not here next Saturday but we will be with you next Sunday which is the 1st of November oh my goodness can it be true have we really <laughs> reached the point where November is just around the corner I can't believe it I really don't believe it at all thank you for your company thank you everybody on the live chat will I have my beard next week mm. you will have to tune in again and find out before I go can I say happy birthday to my sister Alison it's your birthday today yes today it's your birthday hip hip hooray happy birthday to my sister she is another year older today thank you for your company see you next Sunday 2 p.m. UK time as usual I will be here next Sunday Mr. Steve will be here as well this is Mr. Duncan in the birthplace of English saying thanks for watching see you later take care stay safe and you know what's coming next yes you do ta-ta for now